afternoon talk uh-huh. on SAFM. Right, so the second half of the afternoon uh, talk show is in the spotlight. My name is Ashraf Garda, and uh, today in the spotlight is uh, Herman Mashaba. Now, he used to be, well, he was the founder of Black Like, uh, Black like Me, and uh, ironically, he's written a book which is going to be launched. It's, it's on sale already, but it's called Black Like You. A bit of a coincidence indeed. Herman, Herman thanks, for, thanks for coming and appreciate it, allowing us to put you in the spotlight as well. Thank you very much, uh, Aslam. Uh, pleasure and uh, good afternoon uh, to SAFM listeners. Okay, now now the name of the book is called Black Like You, which would suggest that the people who are reading it are black. <laughs> not really, not no. necessarily, but I think obviously for me, I'm, uh, those are the people I'm targeting because I think uh, those are the people who can relate uh, to this life because uh, this book is about my life and uh, uh, I believe very strongly that uh, those are the people I'm targeting. But I think the book is actually quite open to everyone because mm. I think mm. uh, all South Africans, uh, uh, our whites, everyone in the country can obviously gain some inside uh, knowledge of really what transpired mm, uh, for business people like hours like mine my myself uh, uh, the difficulties we went through through during the dark days of this country's history all right so there you are if you um, you know how it works it's all about a profile tackling and reflecting on the life of Herman Mashaba so if you want to um, if you want to call in you can pick up one or two entrepreneurial issues that's fantastic but uh, if you've worked with Herman that's even better if you related to him even better so if you're family, goodness, you're going to get first prize just jumping the queue here and uh, saying hello to him. Well, what I'm saying, basically, if you have an anecdote to share, then uh, we'd love it if you share it on the air with Herman Masham and probably can all, uh, both of us, sort of inspire the nation as they listen to you. If you wish to SMS 3471, they'll cost you two rands. And you can also tweet about uh, what we're doing. Just follow me on Twitter, Ashraf Garanta one and on Facebook as well. And quite a few comments I know already on Facebook. Now, I suggested, by the way, Herman, that... Um, uh, look at my son who's uh, studying entrepreneurship at Varsity. I said, well, that's the book you've got to read. You know, it's, it's compulsory reading, right? In fact, uh, 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 Ashraf, it's actually quite interesting because when I conceived the idea, eventually I was forced to really put uh, pen to paper to write this book. Uh, when I started the project two years, ago, two and a half years ago, the whole idea was that I was going to print three, four thousand copies and just really give them out as so, and so, when. So when private, I, when, private. Yeah, thing, no, basically. that is really what I thought. But uh, the last uh, year, eighteen months, uh, when the, obviously the project uh, began to really become real. And and obviously sharing it with the colleagues, uh, sharing it with uh, my inner circles, everyone said, Herman, it'll be criminal if you don't really sh- uh, open it can't, this. It can't be a private thing. I said, thing. and yeah. I think it's actually quite interesting now to really learn from you that uh, you were saying to your son uh, yesterday that uh, no, I think they, it's they a must read. They I think got uh, they got to read it. You know, <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about black like you, black like me, as opposed to black like you. <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk about the company because I mean it's 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 uh, renowned in South Africa. No question about that. And we'll talk about your own stake in that company in a moment. What what are, you know what are you doing with your time right now? By the way, I think uh, as as of uh, the country knows, uh, in two thousand and two, I made an announcement when uh, the Parliament at the time had discussions around uh, coming out with legislation to govern. Uh, black economic empowerment. I had no choice because since uh, the 1994, even prior to that, I've always really uh, had people knocking at my door, lots of pressure to say, how many are we looking for black investors in our mm, businesses? Mm. And I ignored that. But obviously when when uh, the, this whole matter was going to be legislated, I realized with or without me, this is a reality. And at the same time, in the country, we had these d- debates around uh, people saying, no, oh, black economic empowerment is only for a few politically connected which is something that uh, did not really make sense to me because I was not a political person, mm. but mm. I was invited to participate in B investments uh, from uh, the beginning of the new South Africa. So I decided uh, to, to really take advantage and, and uh, I had uh, the friends and, and, and uh, business colleagues uh, who were willing uh, and happy for me to invest in their businesses. Mm. And at the same time, I had an opportunity to invest in other businesses outside the B. So I made an uh, investor already looking after my investments, B in B or any other investment opportunity. Okay, so th- this is yeah. what I do. I already so, look after my investments. So, so Black Like Me, 
you, you're not directly involved anymore. Absolutely you not. You're not, uh, not uh, as an exec- as an executive. I, I still sit on 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 the board. I'm actually the non-executive uh, chairman of uh, Amka Products. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the friends and, and competitors at the time I've, I've worked with uh, over the last 30 years. Um, uh, in 2004, 2005, we realized an opportunity for us uh, for me to really buy uh, my business, uh, uh, sell 50 percent of the business to them, and actually outsource my production to them and, mm-hmm. and, and all the other related uh, matters. So at the moment, I sit as a chairman of uh, the, of Amca as, as an executive, and they really look after the, the, my interest in the business, and they're doing a fantastic so, job. So because you're not directly involved every day, that's why you didn't look at my hair because I don't have any hair. <laughs> Otherwise, you, you wouldn't. Do well, that, right? well, uh, if if <laughs> if I was still involved directly in the haircut business, I'm sure this would have been the first issue for me to take up with oh, you. Sure. But as you well, can it, see, with me, with me as well, uh, in the last <laughs> few years, uh, because of the pressure, one tends to ignore you know, taking <laughs> care of one's hair. But obviously, when I was in the haircut business, it was important, it was imperative for me to get involved on a day-to-day basis. Obviously, look the part. Now that I'm no longer directly there uh, on a daily basis so fortunate enough i can i can get away with it but every time i see someone not using hair care products and so <laughs> forth i say you know what this person is costing me money it's good. well you're going to get them to lose <laughs> it yeah okay so so let's just get us up so in terms of of the companies that you're actually directly involved in now now i mean in, i'm involved in in, in my the own investment company called lipats investments okay and yeah, that, that takes up your that time. is yeah that's really what i read what i do every day of my life when i wake up to really go to work and i've got investments in different uh, entities uh, from uh, real estate uh, to, uh, financial services and and so forth i think and i'm really having lots of fun work with uh, just a team of four of us in four including myself my pa my chief financial officer and my colleague so it's just the four of us and we really look at this investment Investments. I think today we have uh, maybe 14 or so different investments. And in between, obviously, I think we buy some, we sell some. So depending you're not, on, a, you're not on, a direct employer because I'm just sort of just imagining as we're talking. People no, saying, no, 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 no. Please tell this guy I need a job. So <laughs> I mean, indirectly, no, you no, employ. No, but in, you. indirectly, I think yeah. we I employ a lot you know, <laughs> in excess of 20,000 people in this country indirectly. But uh, directly, fortunately, I think uh, only the, the four of us, um, you know, the, Amazing. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at some of the uh, some of the Facebook comments as well. By the way, just if you just tuned in, we are chatting to Herman Mashaba, uh, who is the the founder of Black Like Me. He's just written a book, or has come out with an autobiography uh, called Black Like You. Now, interesting. I mean, I often ask people if you had to write an autobiography, what would you title the book? So, so you've already done that. <laughs> yeah. Black, Black, Black I, you Black. know, we, 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 right in the middle of this project, I said, what would really this book, uh, what would really be the right title? <laughs> Black Like Me, I said, no, it can't it's be. It's too obvious. But then, yeah. yeah, it's too obvious. And uh, But then at the same time, I actually wanted to talk to the Black youth. Uh, and I said, you know, because I really felt if I've got to really touch them direct. And I said, look, instead of uh, me, it must be you. So uh, when you buy this book, I can assure you this book is going to talk to you. And the sequel will be not white like you as well. Well, I, I mean, unfortunately, the, I don't, ha- I, don't ha- I don't have uh, direct experience. Uh, no, but being, that's why it will <laughs> say not white like <laughs> oh, you. No, no. And I think uh, to, to <laughs> my, my white colleagues in this country, I can assure you, they, they'll <laughs> do themselves a favor to really read the book because then they can really get to really uh, get the insight from a business perspective, really what happened to, to black people. Because I think there's sometimes uh, this open uh, uh, rejection to, to some of the things that are happening in the country. Then people can obviously really look at it from that Indeed. point of view. Well, I certainly yeah. want to talk about how it all started for you, mm. but uh, I certainly invited uh, callers and I said if you are, if you just want to pick up issues on entrepreneurship, that's great. If you use the Black Like Me products, well, you can't really complain to him directly, although he's the chairman <laughs> of the board, he's not uh, involved directly on a day-to-day basis. But if you are related, if you're a buddy, if you're a friend, if you're just someone who admires what he does and if you want to say hi, certainly do that. Now, um, we'll get to uh, Gauta in just a moment. Uh, Luazi is saying... Ask him about his views on business education, such as MBA, since he made it without one. Interesting one. Because Mark Twain, and I quoted him yesterday, said, don't let schooling get in the way of your education. I think it's a, it's a very interesting uh, the question. Um, I, I think for me, education has really been very close to my heart um, in, in my youth. And it's still 
in quite important even today. I think uh, it just really so happened that the apartheid uh, the regime um, the prevented me from pursuing my academic dream. Mm -hmm. And and I ended up actually being in business because when I was at varsity, in, uh, the, my dream, and actually and a dream that I knew I was going to achieve was to become a, a professor. Mm -hmm. and I was, uh, so I mean, I you was did majoring. go to varsity. I mean, that yeah, was the plan. I was in varsity, the, 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 the majoring in political science and, uh, and public administration. So I thought I was going to really be a, a professor, leave the country and mm. really go in uh, and, and, and lecture at uh, one of the big universities outside, outside South and, Africa. And then what happened? And uh, one day, April, um, the, the, in my second year, six o'clock, the uh, campus of Teflop was surrounded by the army and we were asked to leave. And uh, that became the end of my uh, academic dream because two months later when we were called and requested uh, to obviously to commit not to participate in uh, political activity, I decided uh, no, that's not for me because, I mean, it, uh, it, it was not going to be possible for one not to engage. So I, I did not really want to go into a, an obvious kind of situation. And, and you never so went back? I never went back and obviously tried uh, to really get context to get me out of the country. And then the process, waiting, I got a job. <laughs> but then you get a job, you don't have uh, experience. And, uh, I you know. know. Okay, so, I'll tell you what, so hold the thought about the job because I want to get into your whole... So I think let me address this journey. issue about uh, about MBAs and so yes. forth. Really very important. I think I'd really urge uh, particularly our people out there, please don't never really take education for granted because um, uh, the business requirements uh, today without uh, the, the, requ uh, the, the necessary... Uh, educational background, you're mm. going to have serious, serious so, difficulties. So what you're so saying, the if fact you can, that some people have made it, you know, yeah, don't you know, really use that. Doesn't mean a, everybody no, else No, absolutely, make. because majority of our people, more especially if you look at our our our, our economy at the moment in, in South Africa, we're really looking for black managers, and black managers who must obviously look after the big uh, corporations, they really need, unfortunately, you need serious education. Mm. So that, mm. that you, unfortunately, you can't take a, a person like Kevin Mashaba to go and run a bank, I mean, you know, that's why we are uh, above uh, uh, me. But, okay. but, but I can run an entrepreneurial organization. So obviously I think the country offers uh, different opportunities. But if I really do look at South Africa as a country, looking at the opportunities for, for managerial positions, I think uh, black people are in an ideal position. But unfortunately, you need, uh, you need education. So I think okay. let us not really take that well, for granted. Well, the message is very, very clear. Okay, let's, uh, we'll, we'll get to uh, some of the other Facebook comments in a second and Twitter. But let's get to the lines now. Oh eight nine. 104207 as we put uh, Herman Mashaba in the spotlight. You should have a great chat with him up to our quarter to four. Gauta in uh, in Mafi Kang. Hello. Hi, Asraf. Yes. Hi, Hemi. Yes, how are you? Hi. Oh, how her Herman oh. smiles. Is it Gauta? Okay. Gauta. Oh. Herman smiling okay. because he knows you. <laughs> no, yes, but I've not seen or spoken to this man in maybe five, six or <laughs> Really? Or yeah, no. Yeah, but yeah, I, but you went to school <laughs> together from, from one up to, up to university. Oh, up my goodness. University. Well, I'm yeah. glad you called her, Gauta. Uh, okay, you first talk and we'll ask you a couple of questions as well. No, I don't have questions. I just want to tell South Africans that uh, uh, Herman is one of those uh, leaders. Uh, really leaders in the in in the uh, in the field of entrepreneurship, whom uh, um, young South Africans should really emulate. Uh, I've known him since we uh, were in the, our teens, and uh, when he left university at 21, he he he, he told me and our friends that uh, he was going to be an entrepreneur. And just in 1980, I mean, we didn't have that kind of education. But he, he persevered. He went through a lot of um, uh, sectors, the services sector. He worked hard to where he is right now. He's a real inspiration to all South Africans, really. Mm. And Mwele uh, Timbek is right on. He admires Hemen very much. Like all of us, we, we admire you, Hemen. It's very good. You are a very good example. Now well, keep it on. All right. Stay, stay on the line. because let, let, Let's get Hemen to respond, right? No, Hauta, fortunate enough, uh, uh, I've got a privilege of knowing Hauta. I think Hauta's dropped his no. line. It's a pity. Okay. Yeah, fortunate. I know, I know Hauta. We met uh, when we were in uh, Form 1 in 1974, 75. Mm. And uh, we were in the same class until we completed our metric, <laughs> and uh, we went to university. When we went to university, both of us we were going to study law. Uh, he's, okay. he's a lawyer, uh, right. uh, 
he was going to study law and I was going to, uh, uh, both of us were going to study law. Unfortunate for me because I uh, performed badly in Africans, I actually probably got an A for a G. <laughs> so during the first week of orientation, I was advised uh, not to pursue Africa uh, uh, law, the because, law because, be yeah, because I was going to battle. And, and I think it was obviously a fair uh, comment because unfortunately at that time, to really be a lawyer, you needed good Africans. So, you, so flunked, you flunked law and you just ended yeah, up so, becoming one of yes. South Africa's greatest entrepreneurs. <laughs> So yeah. that really, that's how I know the, the gentleman who was a very bright uh, student at school. Okay, that that's... is why he passed everything, including Africans, and I failed. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's get it on. Indila in, in Joburg. Hello. Hi. Hello. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. Hello. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you know, uh, Herman is a, is a great inspiration to me. And I'm sure you'll be a great inspiration to other people. He's got two qualities that are essential good life and, and success. One of them is fortitude, because uh, Herman, you know, uh, was selling things from door to door, which thing many young people cannot afford to do these days. Number two, Herman loves people. Mm-hmm. He, do not just, he does not just love people, but he does things for them. He mentors young people at the Pilkington there and everywhere, wherever he is. He is always focused on people, and that is a mark of success. He may be an entrepreneur uh, with fortitude and stuff like that, but if he did not love people, he would not have been so successful as he is today. And, th- and those two qualities or attributes, I think, are very, very essential to any young woman or man that is listening today, that they must have those two qualities. Hey, Amen. thank you very much for you. And uh, for, and uh, also thank you very much to God for having given us the, the the likes of you. Thank you very much. Okay, nice, lovely, lovely call indeed. Yeah, you want to respond? To no, that? thank you very much. It must be Mister Mundani. Uh, yeah, in fact, I can pick it up from the is voice. It, giving first and uh, because uh, from time to time, uh, I have a privilege of uh, doing mentorship programs for 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 some of the black uh, guys in 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 big companies in in groups. Mm-hmm. And and Mike is really one of my big resources that I'd like to really bring from time to time because he brings a totally different, refreshing dimension to this. So, Mike, I've be, uh, been trying to really get all of you the last uh, few months because <laughs> I started a program last year already, and uh, and definitely. Definitely, you're on my target list. Please uh, respond to my emails. Okay, well, there you are. That's an order, by the way. <laughs> uh, uh, there's another one. Athanasius saying, Mr. Mashaba argues that detecting what business should pay the labor prevents job creation. What does he think about South African wage, the wage gap, and the fact that some of, some of the world's big CEOs don't earn exorbitantly and live lavishly as compared to their South African counterparts? This is a major hamper in job creation. Your your thoughts on that? Let's give a serious. I question. think Ashraf, yes. I think uh, I'm sure this person re- is referring to my role as a chairman of the Free Market Foundation, mm-hmm. and really one of the biggest uh, gripes that I've got. Uh, to really looking at what's happening in our country right now. I have very serious reservations uh, with our current labor legislations that are destroying jobs. Mm. Seriously. We, destroying we, 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 jobs. What's your they are destroying jobs. Uh, they, 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 they enable the country to produce entrepreneurs and industrialists. So for that reason, uh, that unfortunately, something that is very close to my heart, and I really f- share that, really talking to the 7 million plus South Africans, half of them being youth, with no chance of ever finding a job in this country. Mm. That I think is well and good for us. We can talk about decent jobs. But I think uh, for depriving uh, people out there, seven million of them, are high, our employment rate is very high. I think you must have seen the the the, the, the latest results two days ago. Mm. <laughs> the, the, you know, it's the situation is getting it's out crazy. of hand. So but that's well and good. We can talk about decent jobs, but at the end of the day, I think we, we need to really give our people an opportunity to work. So mm. I think if uh, uh, you know, my personal feeling is that you know, allow people to really work, allow them to get experience. And I think our <laughs> labor our labor organizations are playing a very key role in ensuring that people are protected. But let, let us not really create a monster, take the dignity of our people away in the process because by not see, allowing them to work. You see, you're getting the other point, you're getting the, the, the Kosatu line, which is, uh, and I think many people may follow your line to say, even if you don't have the ideal job, just get any job, it's a foot in the door. And it allows you to get in and understand the company, and you're earning some money out of it. Right? You know, now, now the the converse is like, no, we don't want freelancers. For example, we don't want you even appointed through labor brokers. So, in fact, there's a belief that if that follows through, many people will not only be unemployed, but more people will be unemployed because then business will be 
reluctant to hire people if it means there are other if they, if they come with baggage i think you know ashraf we've had experience ever since uh, the introduction of this loss that uh, they, what are the consequences we're sitting with so many of our kids out there in the townships our youth mm, and mm. and actually some some elderly people who some lost their jobs t- 10 years ago 15 years ago I mean so I think it's well and as I said it's well and good we can really be advocating for all these beautiful things but at the end of the day uh, coming out with laws to punish uh, the business people as, as if they're the enemy of the people I think it's, it's we know it's wrong uh, mm. uh, you know so I think we need to really come out with a legislative framework that is equitable and I think personally I appeal to to parliament in particular because they are the ones who've passed these laws to say please uh, South Africa is not really made out of the 2 million uh, unionized people South Africa is made out of uh, 50 million out of the 50 million the 7 mm. million of them they are not working please consult with them and come out with an equitable le- some sort of work. Ca- 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 come out with a legislative framework that can can be equitable to everyone but right now to, for us to be thinking that we can force uh, the entrepreneurs to to employ we know it it has not really happened mm. and i think we cannot really accept the fact that we can allow our people to 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 not really have the dignity okay. you know the other day i was really talking to 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 someone who lost this job just over 10 years ago mm. he's in mid to in his mid 50s you know he, he he knows about my view on on this he had read about it in the paper and he approached mm. me says mr ngashaba please can you really help uh, this country because uh, i feel as as a south african i was misled you know when the new south africa st- started uh you know we were they demanding more and more from my employers and eventually my business closed down mm, and, but at the mm, time i was mm. a shop steward i had union representation he said as soon as that factory closed down i had no representation yeah. so for the last 10 years i don't have anyone representing me any longer so i feel i was i was actually betrayed because i thought i would really be protected all the way so, so now I, so what is happening is, is right now i don't know i don't even know if i still have a marriage any longer because my kids and and my wife uh, have no they look at me as if i'm i'm, I'm a lost something Madness, yeah. and it says every day i see more and more of uh, people like me losing jobs it says please let's make sure that we protect it. definitely we really need our union representation they're doing a fantastic job because not every businessman in this country and the world means well so but i think let's find a, an equitable arrangement and i think that's a role of parliament let them come out with a legislative framework so what, that can work for what everyone what message would you give not just to parliament what would you give kosato if, if please yeah, i think i'd really you, you know really appeal to them to engage our government our, our parliament to really review the, this uh, the, this uh, this framework involve uh, people un- unemployed involve the uh, black uh, entrepreneurs who have lost businesses in the townships because of uh, uh, being put out by the cca made uh, 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 and, uh, and for the record business is is not the enemy of the people how can business be actually business we've got to, uh, to really give them cre- mm-hmm. we've got to, to make sure that let's give them incentives for them to employ our people but at the same time what we do then embark on serious education to educate our people to make sure they are not taken for 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 granted but to really prescribe uh, a minimum wage uh, at the end of the day people are not going to really be employed if you want to uh, uh, to to want people to really earn more create a full employment in the country so that you know what i work for ashraf if, if i'm not happy with ashraf i know six months down the line after 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 he's tried is trained me then i can go somewhere but uh, for 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 you to ask uh, ashraf to give me 15 thousand rands a month and ashraf does not employ me then i sit at home and i lose my family you i lose my dignity i lose my dignity yeah. yeah and i think it's uh, for me it's not and i honestly believe in a challenge of africans when talk to the 7 million south africans who are not uh, who are not represented by anyone interesting questions indeed by the way uh, someone made the point uh, about uh, let's see becky and uh, this is what he said after reading this book and the book of course is just it's in the stores now official launch in about a week or two time he said after reading black like you i appeal to the government to save taxpayers money and stop writing more reports and instead study herman mashaba's autobiography that is a fantastic endorsement for the book you can comment about that in a moment um we're talking of course to herman mashaba in the spotlight up to quarter to 4 i'll take maybe two more calls on this issue max because i want to get into that journey about how he really made it big and i'll get some answers in a moment afternoon talk uh-huh. on SAFM right herman mashaba in uh, in the studio he's in the spotlight there's a question from paul saying I have what I consider great ideas as to help our country but I don't have the guidance what do I what do I do from Paul he's got ideas doesn't have the guidance what what should he do 
Oh, it's a difficult one. Uh, 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 Ashraf to to really deal with, with such a broad uh, the, uh, the question. I, th- mm. I don't know. Uh, I, you know, if I knew the the the, the person at uh, this personality, because you know, I can advise you to really go into a medical school. Maybe right, maybe what, what's or the going one going to business? I, I, I yeah. Forgot. What, what's I the, the one p- advice? I mean, assuming he's an entrepreneur, what, what's the one advice you could give any wannabe entrepreneur? Because I want to talk about your, your I career. think entrepreneurship really revolves around uh, your own having a personal drive, uh, having uh, uh, the appetite for risk, uh, uh, having uh, uh, the guts to understand that uh, the life is tough out there. You're going to be out on your own and you don't have to really wait for the next person. You've got to really be prepared to work hard. You need to really be prepared to sacrifice. And and actually stabilize your life. So there's so many, if, you know, fundamentals. If so eh? yeah, so okay. There's an interesting one from Zizanda saying via Facebook saying, "Good afternoon. Um, I'm still a student and an aspiring entrepreneur. My passion for entrepreneurship is driven by the sole love for people, as I would like to make a difference in the lives of others. And I'm currently in need of a mentor. How can I get in touch with him? I presume she's talking about you. I've tried to get hold of some entrepreneurs that I." look up to with no success can he help i'm based in cape town and there's details blah 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 so my advice to uh to head is that i think uh, ashraf what eventually compelled me to really write this book and make it available to the people is to actually deal with matters like this because mm. how do i really have uh, one-on-one uh, personal contact with 50 million south africans yeah, it's totally impossible. Impo- totally impossible so i think uh i would really if you you can afford to really go and buy the book and really read it at your own leisure without any doubt will really give you okay, a so lot of you know so then you know then you don't really put pressure on anyone so r- if you can okay. afford it really <laughs> just really buy the book and really read so it. And, and, and and the whole idea behind the book uh, uh uh it's not really to really make money you can't make really money out of really buying the book what it has cost me uh, this project there's just no way that i'll ever recover that money it is really more to to really address uh, this personal okay. issues so that, there you are. that i don't have to really go out uh, around trying to really be good to everyone because it is not possible with all the best intentions in the world indeed it's under they won't buy the book it's called black like you the official launch is around the 24th but of it's May. already in there but, but you yeah, can get it already it now so it black like you and that's from the founder of black like me herman mashaba Let, let's talk about that because i need to touch on that now so you went to Varsity, you had the political issues, and they, they said, don't politicize, and you got out, and you never went back. Mm. How did you get in? How, how did Black yeah, then, like then I Then I got a job um, the, the, with Spa Pretoria as a dispatch clerk. I went for, the, for seven months, and all of a sudden, I was exposed to racism, something that I avoided in my youth. Mm. And um, the, then in the, 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 my second job, I uh, worked for Motani Industries uh, for 23 months, and uh, that was my longest-serving uh, salary job. job. Okay. So I worked for salary for 13 months in you know, for in my life. Uh, and uh, ever since, I've really been uh, gambling. So no one guarantees me a salary ever since then. So, so what and then in the then? And then yeah. in the process, uh, the, the bought a car, to, the, actually got married, bought a car, and I went out to gamble. And I started uh, selling linen. To grow. I started the first job I tried was with an insurance company. But two months down the line, I realized this is not for me. But I had plan B. Then I started selling linen, the dinner services, and so forth. And that's when I started mm. making money. Mm. In the process, I sold hair care products for one company here in Johannesburg. I came across it, um, sold for them on a commission basis. And it took me 19 months to say, look, Herman, you've got to move. Because uh, what happens if those guys one day decide to get rid of you? At the time, it took me 19 months to be the top salesman, any purely on commission. And uh, then decided, uh, you know, let me be proactive uh, and take charge of my own personal life. And I decided I must uh, do it on my own. And uh, the apartheid legislation said, no, it's a black man, you can't have business in, in white South Africa. And I said, mm. with or without mm. this legislative framework, I've got to find a way to navigate. And put together the ideas, conceived the idea in 1984 to start the Black Like Me brand. And the 14th of February, 1985, the first Black Like Me product. So how, how did you navigate considering that you were not allowed to trade really? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> operate, uh, be an operate for, be an nominating, no, which, which no, 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 not really. No. I think uh, those the days, uh, you, you, you know, you, you, you as, a, as a human being, make sure that I think you always look at alternatives. They that we had the homeland systems in, mm. in, in, in mm. Putatswana. So, as a black person, uh, you, you, as much as uh, even the homelands at the time were controlled by the apartheid system, but obviously, as black people, you, 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 you had the right to operate there. Yeah. So, uh, the, through uh, the contact of 
of ours, so we could manage to get a small factory in the SBDC small uh, units, 200 square meters factory. We started, uh, the, we got a place there. To, that's where we started operating okay, from, so from, 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 from Buputa Tswana at, at, at the time. But obviously then our market was all over the country. Of course. And you can imagine those days with the pass laws, you know, ducking and diving from the police uh, to, to be arrested for pass offenses. That Because those days uh, you needed a white employer to sign your ID every day, every, every month that you mm. are employed. Mm. And, and it is not just a question of uh, your white employer signing it. Uh, you know, going through the process of getting that uh, yeah. late, wow. uh, oh, just mm. a nightmare. All right, but so some, some questions. You, you spoke about, you, you speak about buying and selling and you call it gambling. Is, well, is, it, as, is it as lucky as that where, well, where you, you win one day and you lose No, absolutely. Day? Well, I think what, what more can I, I think in just simple terms, that's why I call it gambling because the thing is, once you really go into that environment, no, no one guarantees you of uh, of a salary. No one guarantees you of the of your of your returns. So you're the one that has to really make it happen and really make it happen. That's why for me, as as a trader, I, I really take it as a gamble. But I think it's really been fortunate. Okay, All, it's, it's been so now when, almost thirty years. It's been a great uh, journey. But when you when you worked for those two companies and you left Murtani Industries and you said, I want to start on my own, mm. right? So, so your motive was not because you had an issue with them. The, the motive no, was no, you no, said, I, I, need no, no. To, Motani, I need to carve my... No, uh, is those, are those the Motani furniture? Yeah, guys? Motani. You know, oh, okay, I had a great relationship. Even, even, them, even, right, yeah. even today, I still really got okay. a great relationship with them. Actually, uh, They actually facilitated me buying my first camp. So uh, they, they were obviously unhappy for me to leave. But mm. uh, but the thing is, I needed to really to move on and, and really make sure that I keep that relationship. I, I see in your, in your book, there's a, there's a frame of the deposit slip of 30,000 rands. <laughs> Tell me about that. It's a very yeah. significant deposit. Yeah, no, slip. that's uh, that's obviously the original uh, the deposit slip uh, where Walter Dube uh, facilitated uh, through him and Uncle Ned uh, to, uh, to gave us a thirty thousand rands loan uh, to start our business. We started a business with thirty thousand rands, and uh, thirty thousand rands in nineteen eighty five was a lot of money, you know. So uh, Walter and, uh, and Uncle Ned were taking a hell of a gamble there as well. But I think they had confidence in us, and um, and fortunately we never really let them down. We really gave them exceptional returns uh, the, on, on that investment and that's why I'm always feel so grateful. And, and, and you got involved that. in the hair care business by chance because I mean that was no, not something the thing is, at, at, you know, during the time when I was selling on the door to door from the boot of Makai, I was selling any product, mm. you know, from I would really represent three, four different companies at one go. So that uh, Ashraf, if I come to your house, I don't just really sell you linen, I can sell you something else and so forth. So the hair care business, when I actually got exposed to that, I probably within uh, two months or so, I dropped everything because that's when I realized uh, yeah, something, something right, is so happening. How, <laughs> you know? Herman Mashaba, how, how much are you worth now? How much am I worth? I yeah. don't know. I don't. I don't know. Uh, not really much. I, I, unfortunately, I still have to work, uh, and I've still got another thirty years of. You're not, of you're my not life fabulously. There's, there's a nice quote again from Justice uh, Dikang Watsonek, and again, probably one of the best speakers I've ever heard, saying, "A better role model, truer patriot, and son of a soil." I can hardly imagine at a time when someone limited, and even uh, rapacious young business leaders descend on the trough of public tenders. Our youth would do well to read black like you so there you are another another great comment when, when did you realize that you've made it no i've not really made you it still haven't no made it. no abs- uh, i don't uh, think uh, i'm uh, going to uh, make uh, make it in this lifetime i still got a long way to go uh i've still got another 30 years and i think uh um uh, the, one of the biggest challenges that we have got is uh, is to make sure that as one uh, that develops, people around you also develop. And, un- and unfortunately, as a country, we're not really doing well in that space. I think uh, I, it hurts me every time when I look at uh, how, as a country, we're failing to, to produce uh, black entrepreneurs and industrialists. Mm. So I think for me, it's, it's kind of, uh, it, it's, it's nice. It is not something that sits well uh, with me. Mm. And um, is it their fault? It's a combination of so many factors, but I think uh, we, as a nation, as a country, as a people, as a race, right. as Africans, so, so we, we need one, to really deal with. We've got about matter. a minute to go. Quick one. Somebody wants to know: from the time you started, how long did it take your business to go countrywide? 
I, I think we, we were actually quite fortunate enough that, uh, you know, from day one, because I think we, we advantage that we had when we started Black Luck Meat, uh, more especially was, uh, uh, my partner and I who were on the sales side. By the time we started this business, we had customers all over the country, mm-hmm. being the Sochu, Kedeben. We, we had customers selling for, for this other company on commission basis. So by the time we started Black Luck Meat, literally overnight, we went uh, all over the you country. But, but, you but, 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 but we did not really make the mistake of wanting to go national in the sense of if you wanted to buy our products, you heard about it, we, we were happy to you take your money. Office, but right? we're not really prepared to really go out and ri- try and really be everywhere. That, uh, at so the you same didn't time. have no, no, all no, What we did, I think our strategy from day one was to, to really develop an area at the time, develop a distributor. Once we've got enough salons buying from us, we appoint a distributor okay. and then move on. But if uh, someone outside that region wanted to buy our products, we were happy to really sell to you. Okay. But but we did not really want people to... Right. We, to, got, you know, we got 30 seconds to go. So just a final quote, like maybe a business quote that can inspire everybody listening. I think, you know, I'm not really a philosophical kind of person, mm. uh, but I'm a very strong uh, the believer in, 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 in self-actualization. Uh, to say, look, you know what? You've got to really believe in yourself. I think uh, that's the reason why the the uh, the, 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 the name, the uh, my product name, Black Like Me, now the book, Black Like You. I'd really like to really talk to you as an individual. So I think, and that's something that I believe uh, we lack as a country. business is like, ultimately, forget the black. It's all about me and yeah, you, isn't me. it? It's about Buying me. and selling is me and you. <laughs> Herman Mashaba, we could chat for hours, but we can't. Your time is up. Thanks for allowing us to put you in the spotlight. Thank you very much. You well. Get the book, Black Like You. It's on sale right now 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 it's on